Hey guys, it's me, Maud. So I'm here to talk about this photo finally. Thank you for being patient with me. I had to go buy a new headset. It's been so long since I made any type of video content that, like, my headset was broken and everything. So thank you for being patient. I'm going to talk about this photo, but first, my qualifications. Um, so I've been a photographer for... 20 years I have judged um, for Canada for Team Canada internationally I've done this I'm a, a master photographer um, so I know what I'm talking about but take this at face value I mean you know and please don't like send any agents to my house or anything like you know I, I could be wrong so like here we go though um, here's why I think this photo is real. Um, so I pulled this one and I'm actually really glad I had to wait because then this one came out um, that I was able to pull. Uh, I saw earlier today. So I have that one to compare, which is great because I was like, oh, how am I going to do a Photoshop sample? And then a Photoshop sample showed right up. So that was fantastic. So I've got all this proof. I've got everything together. So I've got that. Um, and yeah, so what are my qualifications? I don't know. I just do this as a job professionally but whatever take that for what it's worth um, so here we go so just as a courtesy a couple things um, so uh, thanks it's Ben Ruff who pulled this for me yesterday after I posted so we've confirmed that on the date and time stamp in the photos that they were both in the same place at the same time um, so thanks Ben uh, for doing that and just because it makes sense to do it. Whoops, sorry about that. Let's get rid of that. I've also gone ahead and um, pulled up. I ran these through um, just, you know, the generic AI detectors. Just, you know, we've all done it, right? Um, so these say AI generated probability zero. So true image probability, meaning that... Uh, these were likely done with a human hand or with a camera, whatever. So what I've done uh, just to show my work so far, uh, I've pulled this into um, Photoshop and I've just made one right over top of the other. That's all I've done. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete this just to get rid of it. So that's it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is that to begin with, I think these are two separate, nearly similar images uh, right off the bat. So if I take this and I make it uh, just kind of half of its um, opacity there, I could not get these two images to properly line up uh, right away so I can get the chair to line up, but then uh, the one hand is here and then in this image it's here and then in this image it's here and in this image it's here so everything is moved um, his head is different up here and it's different here uh, the body position is different here and it's different here um, the the feet are slightly different everything is slightly off um, which makes it very, very challenging to prove that these are even like the same frame. These may be very similar frames. They may be one right after the other, right? I don't know. I can't make them quite line up, but let's get them close anyway. If I line up the chair, right, the chair and the feet is what I did and the the date was what I did because that is about as close as I could get it um, and that's where I was working from okay um, just to kind of show where I was working from and what I thought was photoshopped between what I believe to be the genuine image and what I believe to be um, the true image and as you can see even one has been stretched so going from that what I believe to be the true image to what I believe to be the genuine image and even from there all I'm going to do is take and stretch just a little to make them align so I'm resizing just a little bit and now I feel like they're just about 
close enough that I can do a relative comparison. So again, these are not high resolution images. These are not anything that are, you know, professional. This isn't a professional investigation. This is obviously not what I do in a competition. This isn't what I do for anything else except, hey, this is the internet. This is fun and I can do this, right? We're doing this with a grain of salt. This is just what I can prove with two very low resolution images that I've stolen from the internet, right? Right. Okay. Take it with a grain of salt. So now, going back, what makes me think this is fake versus real? These are our images. So if I go in really close, everything's pretty dark, but actually I can correct that in Photoshop really easily just by doing something with a curves adjustment and brightening the dark. So all I've done is create a new layer over top and I'm gonna brighten specifically my dark areas. And I've done this to both layers. That's all I've done, I've just added brightness. And that's just so I can go in close. Again, I would never do this. Looking at somebody's competition image, this isn't a competition, but right away we're exposing some pretty serious flaws here. So when I look closely at this image, I can see all the bands in the background here on the on the boardwork on the door. I can see the books, but as soon as I look in here, Man, I can see some really weird pixelated stuff. First of all, there's no detail at all. And when there is, it doesn't line up. You can see there's some really bizarre pixelated pieces here. What is going on there, right? Uh, the books are not made properly. You can see there's some really weird, large pixelated chunks there, right? But then when I get closer, then I can see these really weird, small pixelated pieces. But when I get closer to Bill, you can see his arm is all weird and janky too. So you wouldn't see that. When you look at the original image, it's all like that. It should be consistent. So when I think back to when this image would have been made, it would have been made, it was made the end of 2004. Now digital cameras, they were on the market, but they weren't available to most people. I mean, if you're just some weirdo creep that's taken pictures for blackmail, you wouldn't have had a digital camera. You would have had a point and shoot, something that was easy to get developed and done and be done with it. You wouldn't have had a digital camera where you've got high resolution or well you would have had maybe two me megapixels tops at the time first of all um and second of all you you just you wouldn't have had that this, this is probably film 35 millimeter high quality but i mean going by based off what that was at the time i'm guessing this is just an old old 35 millimeter and and later scanned and look at the quality throughout right look at the quality throughout the whole photo but as soon as we get to this part where it looks like it may be tampered back onto the one that I believe is um, tampered with you can see all around the head and all around where where Bill's head is sitting where it's been played with you can see all these weird pieces that have been inserted right and that's not normal so these are some dead giveaways especially right around the hands around the chair where it's been moved so and that's just getting in close especially right here um, and then there was another one down in here there right in here where it's all changed so those are just some dead giveaways um, there, right here at the arm, there was a big spot right there. You can see um, where those flaws are, and they're just not there on this photo. Um, so that would be the giveaway. The other places I saw it as well was over here, uh, right in where the, sorry, that zoomed in fast. There we go, in here, there's just no detail, and there should be. There should be. Um, in every photograph, in every black, uh, there should be detail. So that would be why I believe uh, this photograph to be real versus uh, this one being fake. Uh, and, and it's as simple as that. The, the hallmarks of this being a real photograph are simply there. The other thing that would happen is um, the haloing around the head, uh, which is very clearly visible here. So when this is cut out, you can see right around the head, 
um, we call this haloing. Um, and its effect, <laughs> again, because it looks like a halo, you can see right around the head, there's this artifact that's right around. Um, and it depends on the person's uh, job, but you can see this around any artifact in any photograph. When something's been photoshopped, if you start to play with the elements, anytime you get playing with any sort of effect, so if I play with the curves again, this effect becomes more and more pronounced the more you play with anything. So and that's called haloing. And so any pho photographer, anyone who's not skilled with Photoshop, if you are not clean with your lines, when, with your editing, this haloing effect becomes more and more prominent the more you play with the photograph. So it, it's just clear here that this photograph is edited. But again, if I come back to Donald Trump, right, that artifacting is way less significant which would point to it being genuine, right? It, it exists around all objects naturally, but when it's imposed on there, you can see how very obvious it becomes. And you can see where the fake pieces are very obviously, very simply. Whereas this one's almost monotone here, you can see there's no real standout pieces. Whereas they become glaringly obvious here, right around the head, right around the hands, right around the back, right up in here. So that's what I mean by haloing. Um, which I talked about. So uh, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to uh, cut it short because I do that I get yapping and uh, I'm gonna post this up on YouTube and uh, and then uh, link it over on threads so I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching